Uh, your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's really an honor, a unique honor for me to be with you today, and I'm very humbled to be asked to make a few remarks. Anything I would say after these brilliant presentations, of course, would be very much an anticlimax. I've learned a great deal, and I'm grateful for having had that opportunity. I guess a couple of quick points. Um, I've used this phrase before, but I think it's descriptive, uh, accurately so, that we are in the middle of a perfect storm. Uh, in my long life, at least, I have never known a period in which we have so many simultaneous, uh, complex and protracted crises, armed conflicts, and humanitarian emergencies from the western bulge of Africa well into the Himalayas. I counted nine at last, at last count. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that there is nothing on the horizon uh, in the way of a political process or active negotiations that offer any of us any hope of a short to medium term solution to any of these. People are losing confidence in their government's ability to manage the so-called other, or the foreigner, the migrant. Uh, there is an absence of international moral, uh, moral authority. It's in decline. There is an abuse of international and humanitarian law on all sides. There's a, an appalling lack of political courage on the issues. Uh, and so I think, in a way, we're in the middle of a perfect storm. In with that is, of course, rising xenophobia, anti-foreign sentiment uh, that makes it very, very difficult to manage uh, the situation. Uh, I think the second point would be that we, therefore, in the middle of a storm, we need to try to capture the high ground. That means trying to recall uh, these two great uh, ancient uh, religions, the teachings that both of us uh, telling the same story of the creation of one humanity under one God, uh, whichever angle it, it, it may be coming from, uh, telling us that men and women are children of God and members of a universal family, fundamental things. And I think the final point I would make is that if we are going to crunch through to what we want in this world conference, we've got four challenges. Number one is the disasters. We've got to deal with those. Number two, is to deal with the demographic imbalances in the world. I just came back from Niger yesterday. Population, the world's poorest country. Population will double within 18 years. An aging global north with more people getting, uh, uh, more people dying than being born and those staying behind aging. Uh, needing workers, a global youthful south that is in need of jobs. But there is no really program of public education or information to help prepare people that we're all going to, all our societies will become more multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-religious, multilingual. And then that brings me then to the point that we therefore have to learn to manage, not only to manage, but to embrace diversity. Diversity historically has been overwhelmingly positive for our countries. And then finally, how can we change a very toxic public discourse about the movement of people, about foreigners and the other, as to how they can. So you do two things. You, you endanger their lives, and you deny yourself of their contributions to your society. So I want to thank you for that and congratulate you on this initiative today and for that of holding a world conference. You certainly have our full support. Thank you.